Good evening, folks. This is your ticker guy updating you on the 11th of October. Well, this is the worst week ever in the history of the U.S. stock market. In the meeting 1929, the infamous October crash. Folks, this is not really a stock market event, although that is where you most likely feel it in your 401ks and IRAs. It is, in fact, a credit market event still today. Unfortunately, the anecdotes that I am getting are even worse than they were earlier in the week. I'm now seeing reports that there are grain shipments, Christmas stock, other forms of shipments, both within and beyond the United States borders, that are being held up because letters of credit from various banks are not being accepted. Letters of credit, ladies and gentlemen, are absolutely essential elements in the world of international shipment of goods and to a large degree shipment of goods within the United States. You see, if you're in China and you ship something to the United States and that person doesn't pay you, you'd have to come over and sue them in order to get your money. That's not going to happen. So if you're a Chinese producer, you demand a letter of credit from a U.S. bank that says that the, the buyer of those goods is good for the money. And when you have that letter of credit accepted by your bank, then you go ahead and you ship the goods. Well, now those letters of credit are being declined. This is an extremely ugly situation, ladies and gentlemen, because there is a pipeline, and once it empties, it will take time to refill. I'm also hearing anecdotes of truckers having trouble fueling their vehicles because of credit shutdowns in the trucking industry. So far, this has all been small independent truckers that I've heard from, but if it spreads into the fleets, things are going to get very ugly very fast. This is where the rubber meets the road and where this all translates into Main Street. And this points out the fallacy of the Paulson-Bernanke plan. TARP has not addressed any of this, nor can it, because this is a confidence problem. It's not a problem of solvency or liquidity so much as it is one of trust. The simple fact of the matter is that nobody believes anybody else. And that is the key. My advice remains the same as it was. Raise cash. If we have some kind of a banking holiday or the credit system breaks down, you're going to need actual money. No, it doesn't have to be six months worth of cash in your hands, but you need to be able to survive for six months, maybe more, without access to the credit markets, which means no credit cards. So whether the cash is sitting in your bank account, the FDIC insured, or whether it's sitting in a safe deposit box at the bank, or whether you prefer to bolt a safe to the floor of your house and put it in there is not really material but that you don't need access to the credit market in order to survive is. Because there is absolutely no guarantee this isn't going to continue. And then, folks, when it comes to the short-term trade credit, governments will do everything in their power to prevent this lockup from continuing. They must. They know that if they fail at this, the result will be the breakdown of basic and essential services and goods in the American economy, and in fact worldwide. For an example of how bad it can get and how fast, take a look at Iceland. Iceland had their currency essentially devalued in the international marketplace by two-thirds in one day. To put that in perspective, that means that absolutely everything that Iceland imports tripled in price in the same amount of time. And you say, well, what's the big deal? Well, the Volkswagen car that was $20,000 all of a sudden becomes sixty. More important, what happens if what's being imported is grain and other essential agricultural products? Can you afford that sort of a change? Maybe. Maybe not. But it's certainly going to change your life one way or another. In terms of the stock market, we are well overdue for a bounce. I expect one in the next week or so. I further expect that there's going to be some kind of dramatic announcement that comes out of the world leaders sometime within the next couple of days, probably before the markets reopen Sunday night in Asia or Monday morning over in Europe. I wouldn't put it past them to close the markets entirely for a brief period of time. But it would be a mistake because every time that this has been done in the past, it has resulted in a panic reaction when they reopen. So my expectation is that's not what's going to happen. What you will probably see instead is something entirely different. My guess is, is that what's likely to happen is that you will see some sort of stabilization attempt made before the markets reopen, and the market will rebound possibly quite strongly. After all, it sold off very strongly. If you're caught in positions, this might be a good time to think about getting rid of them. Because the end of the decline 
It's not here. In fact, with the leverage out of the system and the bankruptcies having proceeded to pace, I would not be surprised to see the S&P 500 trade at 500 sometime in the next 12 or 24 months. I would not be surprised to see the Dow trade at 5,000 sometime in the next 12 or 24 months. I would not be surprised to see several of the largest corporations in the world bankrupt. Would shock me the least. We're going to enter a new world of finance, ladies and gentlemen. The leverage that made the old one so profitable is now gone. The ability to lie, cheat, and steal will disappear. Whether governments enforce that and make people deal with each other honestly, or whether the market will enforce it by bankrupting each and every one of these firms one after another, is really the only question left on the table. If you go over to supportedthebailout.org, you will find a new document that I faxed all 535 members of Congress this afternoon. It's still in progress. It calls forth the problems with the current TARP plan, puts forward an alternative, and calls for their support. I urge everybody to take a look at that document, and if you think it makes sense, and I believe it does, to get on the phone, get on the fax machine, first thing Monday morning, and start raising hell. Get through the media. Take this outside of the world of YouTube and a handful of other people. Folks, if this spreads into the places where it touches you, and it hasn't already, you won't have this time to react to it. If it turns out that they unstick the short-term commercial credit markets and they stabilize, you've done yourself no harm by having enough cash to survive three to six months or 12 months in the bank. Being able to get by without credit for a couple of years wouldn't do you any harm. But if you don't take these steps and worse comes to worse, it's a different matter entirely. After all, if you take $100,000 out of your brokerage account and you move it into your bank, have you lost anything? No. If everything blows over and they manage to stabilize everything, you can always put it back. But worst case, if you wire it, it's going to cost you $30. Big deal. If you go out and you stock up some extra food, you have that in your pantry, you have some extra water, you have some, you know, some bottled water, you know, a couple extra cans of gasoline in your, in your garage, and you know, jerry cans that you in an emergency you can put in your car. You lost anything? No. Most of you that are older than about 20 probably grew up in a household where your parents had a pantry. And that pantry was stocked full of food. Shelf upon shelf upon shelf of stuff. This was from a day when we worried about things like this. The Russians bombing us. The depression. Today we don't think of these things. But folks, the IMF was out today warning for potential financial catastrophe. Or maybe they're scaremongering. Or maybe they're seeing the same data I am. In any event, it pays to be prepared. Have a good evening.